Hello and welcome back, I'm Aruma, thank you for joining me, let's play some more Kale, eat your greens in EU4. We're on track right now to uh, exact our tax on this guy. This siege is not making much progress, we'd kind of like it to make progress, so that we can end our own war soon. This is uh, Lana, who, he does have cores over here, but it doesn't interfere with my Pego return cores. He doesn't barely really even want this land. So the sooner these guys can peace out, the better for me, actually. We do have a Siege Pip Leader, do they? They don't. Let's give them a Siege Pip Leader. And let's also consider bringing the cannon up to there. We still have room for more Force Limit. We are making money. Let's get two more cannons. Or if we had the manpower for it, we would. Naval Force Limit is not changing too much. I'm thinking actually about moving my capital and starting to develop the Renaissance now. I was looking at income from trade and we're now making more money from Bengal than in Burma, which means that if Bengal didn't have the the collecting in trade not outside your capital node penalty of 50%, it says 66, but it's actually 50, right? Because without, if you look at our negative, it's negative 34, which means that the actual number is 100% minus the 34 putting it at 66, and then if you doubled that, we'd be at 132, right? So if that penalty didn't exist, then our actual penalty, our actual trade power multiplier in this node would be um, 132%. So it always cuts your trade power in half when you collect in a node that's not your capital. So basically our income from trade would double if, our, if this was our capital node because we would have twice as much trade power, right? Roughly. Of course, you're increasing the trade power for the total node and blah, 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 other math, but still, you know what I'm saying. And these guys are just going all over the place. Can't move our capital while at war, but I'm looking at Bengal Delta. And thinking that it's looking pretty good. The burgers are currently very loyal. So I'd like to, to make this our capital. And then develop the institution in the capital. Unfortunately, we're going to miss out on some of the burgers, like, bonus trade power from being in charge here, the 50%. But the thing is that it's the capital, and I want the capital to be in a world port, so it kind of has to happen. Which reminds me, we should probably save up money for that, too. Also, we're completely out of manpower. Again. Let's pull that infantry off. Things like this suck. The amount of attrition we're suffering here is just ridiculous. Let's actually not even... I'm just going to shift consolidate for a second. And I think we're going to go down to a much slower siege here because the, these cannons are just expensive to reinforce. And when you have no manpower, you have to pay a lot. A lot to reinforce armies. So even if we don't have those cannons and the siege takes a little bit longer, I think we actually lose less over time. That's occupied by a guy now, which is not us. This one has negative 29. We can actually help out with that siege too if we wanted to. They do have a siege pip leader. They have no cannons. I could establish my own blockade here. 14 sail speed. Transports could probably take care of the job. I don't think there's any enemy navy. Oh, there's actually a heavy out there. Still, I have a vested interest in this war ending soon. So let's take half of the lights then. Six lights can take a heavy, I think. Alright, we've vassalized you. We want to break tributary status with you in September of next year. You were kind of close to theoretically being able to vassalize, and we still have a relationship tied up with you. If we were just a great power, that'd be another thing. That missing out on great power interaction, the trust gain and the just the other stuff you can get from it is pretty significant. That's an extra 25 opinion, 5 trust for like being able to vassalize people and stuff. It adds up. There's no loot to be had there, so we'll go down to Dagon.
Darwal has declared war on Kangra. That army has a two-star leader. There's Sadia 1. Good. And we got it done before the annual tick, so that means that we can hopefully get that subject status back and get that extra 300 manpower from him. I think that the relationship's just, like, broken, though, so I need to be at real, like, full peace before I can offer it to him. He would accept if we weren't at war, but we're probably going to miss this tick, just based on the fact that I can't end the war with Tongu yet. All right, Tongu's going to force Lana off. We are blockading Pegu. So we want to come in... We want him to, like, give us control of the siege so that we can occupy that fort. Alright, from you, I want... In addition to your becoming a subject at some point soon, I'm not going to pay Diplo points to force you to be a tributary. But I do want, like, transfer trade, money, prestige. The money is not as important as the prestige right now. Alright, so we let Tongu win the fight. We're still at war with just Tongu, I assume. Is that actually... He actually is fielding 14,000 troops himself, or is that part of the other guy? Is part of the other guy is doing that. Put that one there. Now he's just going to leave. I think we just go with, like, a another... Pretty low-key siege. We'll take one cannon, plus the siege pit leader, plus... Say seven infantry. We do have the blockade in place, which is all that really matters. And uh, I'm going to keep stockpiling my monarch points until it's time to move our capital once this, this war is done. We actually got to maintain some of the siege status because we got there quickly enough. I could have timed it a little bit better, so we actually like arrived the day after Tongu left. And then we could have maintained some of the status the other guy built up. I could also just suffer attrition since we did get 900. And we could send the cannons over for extra siege speed. Having Meng Nai not ally, not not defend Tongu means that he still is our tributary. We can't betray him and attack him soon. Which is a kind of unfortunate situation. Kind of. Let's again top off relations with this guy. Alright, with everyone here, we end up with how many cannons? We've got 6,000, which gets rounded down. We require 1,000 men to reinforce. We recover 150 per month, and at 3% attrition, Let's say I left like 6, 6, 606 stack, that's 12,000 troops times 0 0.03 means we're going to lose 360 manpower a month just to maintain the siege, so I, I couldn't even do it if I wanted to. We could maybe field a plus 2 bonus, but that just doesn't feel worth it to me. So now I'm just going to pull them back off again. Or apparently not, because... They're going to suffer attrition now because movement speed. Okay, what if we leave the infantry behind and a cannon behind and we use the leader? Then can we get out in time? Yes, we can. <laughs> Man, trying to min-max this attrition. Jeez. Then we need to turn right back around and pick up the siege ship leader again. Alright, Edicts. We've got this one on. I already put down that rebellion. Let's turn this one back off again for a while. And then we've got the Bengali Separatists in Sanargoan, which is due to missionary conversion. This is the Ravada. This is the Ravada. 
We have some unrest here. We don't need missionary strength for the moment. Eventually we'll probably just bring an army over there and suppress. Nice wall breach with only one cannon. Pretty nice. We could fight his army, but I'd rather not. It's a lot of manpower loss to do a battle like that. There's the integration, so we're no longer over the relationship limit. But that did piss some people off. That does give us adjacency to his Senwi. And actually, if I wanted to, I, I could release his Senwi from here. I mean, I know we just paid to integrate him, but we, we could do it. And also, we now border Mangkang, who will become a tributary for free once we are at peace, and he is at peace. And this is actually proper Shan culture. The, the, our primary culture. We're finally into our own primary culture. The accepted culture of our country. Shan. Nice. We could accept Burmese. Which does make up a fair bit of development in our country. Alright, main thing I want is to return cores to Pegu. Will give us 39 karma. Kale will lose claims on Molmin and Dagon. That's fine. So we return everything to this guy. We gain 39 karma, actually swinging us back toward the middle a little bit. And then in theory, because we have full influence, if we wanted to, we could also like demand provinces. I could try to take this province, which is part of this thing and is not grasslands. Nothing else that he owns is grasslands. There's nothing to release over here, and there's nothing to release from here, but this is part of a state that we already own. It's a lot of unrest and a lot of um, aggressive expansion to take a province that doesn't actually matter for the achievement, I think. So probably won't be doing that. Hopefully he just kind of marches around suffering attrition, not actually doing any damage to me. I think we have built up some prosperity here and there, and I'd rather not lose it. Especially in the states that are closer to the capital. Where are you going? Why are you trying to stop me from converting? Don't do that. So he's going to put some devastation on this state, which is just so close to being prosperous. Let's see if we can scare him off just by letting him know, hey, there's an army coming. Disease outbreak, naturally. Gotta get disease outbreaks when you have no manpower. That's, that's very important. Alright, so he is causing devastation. Thank you. Thank you for that, buddy. I mean, he's trapped, right? He's he's up here. He's gonna get flanked pretty hard. He's on tech 7 to our tech 7. We do have 6 cannons, 2 cav. We're only gonna lose infantry. It is manpower. It'll help, out, help to piece him out a little bit sooner. Apparently I have an army here that I inherited. Also, we're over the force limit by two. So... We're gonna need to consolidate out some of these troops after this war is done. Yeah, we gotta take this fight, I think. Hopefully the losses are not too high. Stop rolling nines, dude! Why, why would you roll so well? Stop it. Truce with Orissa is now up. Stop rolling zeros on my side! Like, what the hell? Look at this. We lost 4,000 men. That's too much manpower. Just full-on proper consolidate to get under the force limit, I guess. Two five two with cotton. The only estate that like could theoretically have more land and kind of be reasonable would probably be the, the nobles. Just give that to the nobles and then raise autonomy. That way we at least get the force summit out of it without having to deal with anything else. I would like to catch up on Diplotech slightly, but again, Renaissance not embrace penalty is way too big. There's Pegu's siege. So this is occupied by us. Let's give this to Pegu. Let's give this to Pegu. Let's take the time probably to occupy 
at least that province. We'll send... We'll send two troops to there. The rest of these guys can just kind of hang out in Pegu. Let's come back from Jaipur and see if this guy's ready to peace out with us. Or maybe capture that heavy. We sank it. Back to protecting in Bengal. Let's do peace deal with you. Alright, so transferring it like this, it gives us 39 karma. And it costs 34 war score. Using the return core, it gives us 39 karma, 37 war score. 6 AE versus conquest, which is 4 AE. So actually, it's, I don't understand why it's different, but it's always kind of been that way. Quite irritating, I think. That's about to be unseaged. There's our truces with the guys we spat out. I could definitely use money because I need to upgrade my ports. So maybe we do try to siege out one more province or something. Jaipur tributary status needs to get cancelled right away. So that we can then offer him an alliance and then try to make him into a vassal. I've been using this relationship slot this whole time without really getting a tangible benefit from it. See how the war score went down from 37 to 34 because we occupy the war, the actual thing. If we could get to Mulmin, it would help out a little bit. But I think we're good with these these four plus money plus war reps. We are at negative 93 reasons though because we don't have enough war score. And this guy just suffered a disease outbreak. Why don't we park this army up there? See if it's possible to help that siege complete. Maybe we don't put the whole thing. We go down to like a four stack again, with the other army kind of hanging out nearby. No such luck on finishing the siege off here. I think that army's probably safe. Pegu and Kalandi are both kind of, kind of doing stuff. Let's suppress rebels with this other army for now. Down to here and suppress rebels with this army. Hopefully he's not coming to. Engage either of these stacks. Alright, this other guy's leaving, so we'll just put the three stack and go join it. Should be safe-ish. Just trying to get our fort back. Ava's been maxed out. He is now willing to become a tributary. We really need to get to peace. Maybe we scale this back a little bit. Why don't we just take a little bit less? I want this next... Like, there's a bunch of people I could have as tributaries right now. Let's just peace out now. It returns all those cores. This army can all come up to here. And there's a lot of stuff we can do now that we're at peace. So Pegu is kind of disloyal at the moment. Let's cancel the embargo thing. Let's... Probably just placate him, because I want that trade power. Granted, he's in a node that's... Yeah, he's in the Bengal node, so I want that. Okay, so, Jaipur, I need you to become my ally. We can get another 9 opinion from improving relations, but he's definitely within vassalization range. Now that we're at peace, we can re-establish tributaries on Sadia. We can get a tributary on Ava, now that he's no longer mad at us, despite the fact that we conquered him. Who else can we establish tributaries on? I think that was the only other person. So we've, we've got Sadia back, we've got Ava. That's another... Effective 50 manpower per month, and in two months we get 600 from that, which is pretty good. I need to remember to actually change it to manpower, though. And now with Pegu, we can apparently turn Embargo Rivals back on again. This guy is too far away from still... Yeah, we can't, I can't actually get him as a subject, but this guy, I think we can. We already have the Royal Marriage. Send a gift is 25. And for the moment, dealing with the Bengali separatists in Sanar Goan. That'll go away as soon as the conversion's complete, which is going to be done in pretty soon. We have no unrest here. Not running an edict there. I think we move the capital here. 
It's going to piss off the burgers, which means we're not going to get a good discount for a little while, but... I think I, it's time. By moving the capital, we also change where we collect from trade. And I think it's going to increase our income pretty significantly. Right now we're making 0.57. Let's see what we end up with if we move our capital to here. So we were collecting in Bengal, and we were collecting in Burma. Let's instead uh, send a merchant to... Well, it'll take like two months to update anyway. Alright, I'm going to take a break here. Uh, next episode, we're going to do a lot of this peacetime stuff. We're going to let our works option come down and turn our eye toward other expansion routes. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you again in the next episode. See you soon.